Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studios and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the brand new terrain feature in D5 2.9 and how you can transform your flat landscapes into realistic terrains. So by default, D5 already has a terrain object in the scene, but for whatever reason you don't have this, you can always add it from this menu. I'm also going to switch my navigation to orbit, just a better way for me to move around but feel free to use whatever is more comfortable for yourself. So the three main functions here are Sculpt, Paint and Manage. Now Sculpt is what you use when you want to create mountain and modify the landscape. Here I'm going to find Sculpt Upwards, Downwards, Erase, Smooth and Flatten. So here I can select Sculpt Upwards and I have a couple of parameters that I can work with. These will be Size, Strength and Edge Falloff. And all of these parameters are pretty much the same for all the other tools. Size controls the radius or area of the sculpt. Once again, you can use the shortcuts down here or adjust the sliders to adjust the parameter. But as I click and hold, I am pulling some of the landscape up, thus creating some mountains. Now, Strength controls the intensity of the sculpt, basically how fast the tool reacts. By using the low value, you can see how slow the mountains are forming. Versus using the high value, you can see how fast the tool is reacting. Now edge falloff controls the slope transition from the peak of the mountains all the way to the bottom. As an example, a value of zero, we have no slope whatsoever. So it feels like we're pulling a perfect circle up. And with a high value of say 100, you get a smooth transition slope based on this brush texture. You can also always change this texture to something a little more organic. As you know, a mountain is not a perfect circle. So these brush textures are perfect to add a little bit more of a mountain feel to your landscape. And you can see from these options that they feel a little more natural. Now if I sculpt downwards, it pushes the landscape down and I can use this to create holes or crates. The erase tool levels everything to the ground. So it basically erases everything that you've created. Smooth obviously creates a smoother surface across your landscape. And flat tries to connect everything to a flat surface. Now we also have a height map resources. These are pre-made mountain objects. So they're pretty much close to real life mountains. If for example, I bring in this volcano too, I can blend it in and move it around with my existing landscape. So it's great that you have the option to create something yourself and have pre-made objects that you can blend into your creation. So here you have the option of adding 10 object and as for the settings, it's pretty much everything I just explained. So feel free to explore what each of these parameters do. So this is the part of the video where I speed things up as I use these tools and do my best to create a mountain environment. So I'm going to pull these as high as I can to create some very, very tall mountains. I actually should have added a scale figure just for reference, but I'm going to eyeball things and try to have a little fun. This is nothing architectural, so no need to be precise. In the meantime, I'm also going to set my view so I can work with what's in front of the camera and focus just on that. Here, I'm going to sculpt down. This could be an area where it could be used as a lake. And now I'm going to add some of these height map mountain objects, some of them further in the background and some closer to the camera. And I'm also going to smooth and flatten some of these area out so it feels more like a walkable terrain and just adjust things as I go. So pretty much after a lot of push and pulling onto this landscape, this is the result that I ended up with for my final result. I promise this is going to look better towards the end. So now let's look into some materials. The paint function lets us add material to our terrain. And if you take a look at a mountain, the ground is the flat surface. So here you can add at about 10 materials. Slope is represented by the rock material and peak at the very top is represented by a snow material. And that is the material transition we see when we create these mountains. So on our ground, we already have one material. So let's add another one. 
And to do that, just click on this add icon and I'll select this woodland material from the library. Select the brush and adjust the settings if you need to. And now I can start to paint this material over my ground landscape. Now imagine adding about 10 different materials for realistic details, especially for areas that are closer to the camera. You can paint grass, dry ground, sand, and rocks to enhance the foreground level of detail. Or you can also use these materials as zones for scattered objects. And that's what I love about these D5 features. Everything is optimized to work extremely well and just makes the entire process a little bit easier for realistic results. And we're going to do a little bit of scattering in a minute, but as you can see, I'm painting a different material over certain areas because I'm starting to see what I want to scatter and what ultimately my landscape could look like. Notice how on the slope you only have one material. You can replace this if you want, but you also have some unique parameters that you can adjust that would be the erosion and weathering and this gives you the chance to create a more natural slope transition between the ground and peak material and that goes for the peak as well you can adjust the peak altitude edge blend erosion and uv stretch for a more peak natural look So after painting the materials over my area this is what the landscape is looking like everything's really starting to come together now the same way there are presets for landscape objects as we saw previously there are also presets for the materials that can change the entire look of your terrain so if you select this icon go to the material template in the library and here you can select different type of templates that you can try you will find some snowlands forest environments and other settings similar to what we saw in the d5 trailer video and along with presets don't forget that you can also import your own height maps and you can do that in the manage section if you click here you can manage your own custom maps and the best requirements are 16-bit depth with 2k resolution so this is pretty much our terrain looking much better than what we've started with and one of the best things like i mentioned before is that you can scatter objects on top of your terrain using the materials so now on any of my materials i can click these three dots select create scatter area and this is going to activate scatter feature where we can use this material as a host now scatter is another great feature of d5 that is so intuitive and easy to use that it takes the material distribution to a whole nother level and i have a complete guide tutorial on the channel that you can watch the link will be in the description or somewhere on the video Hopefully from this example, you can see that the terrain feature is the perfect addition to D5 that can really improve your exterior visualization. Not only can you modify the landscape by creating hills and valleys, but it also offers object presets and material presets enabled to speed up the workflow. Keep in mind that with this, you no longer need a third party software to model the landscape. It easily handles large landscape without slowing down your project. And it works perfect with all the other D5 features, specifically the D5 scatter. So what do you guys think of the terrain feature? Let me know down in the comment section. We will be covering more D5 2.9 features in upcoming videos. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next time we upload a brand new video as always don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time